So there's a cab driver. He picks up a lady. He's in New York. Has to take her like 10 blocks up and a few over to the right. And just as he's pulling over to where the destination was, she uh, she leans back in her seat. She has a skirt on. And she says, hey, I don't have any cash on me. But will this do? And she, you know, does the old, uh, what's that movie where she uncrosses her leg? Final. Basic instinct. That's right. She pulls the old basic instinct. And she says, you know, well, uh, can we work something out with this? And the cab driver looks at her and says, in your best Gilbert voice, do you got anything smaller? Do you got anything? Like, as if it was a $50 bill that he didn't want to make change for. But in this case, it's one of those things where he's <laughs> like, wow, you got a big vagina. A big vagina. You only have to say it once. I did. <laughs> That's a twofer. I like how your jokes have a DVD commentary. <laughs> Well, I figured I'd explain. It fills in the gap where the laughter would Speaking of go. gap. Hey-o. <laughs> uh, but enough about that. Uh, uh, on to happier things. You want to do the introduction? We will do the introduction. I'm Jacques. Who cares? <laughs> What's the name of our show? This is Carnival Personnel. Now, who are you? I'm Jacques. And who am I? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I'm Joe. It's that CTE that we, I think we <laughs> talked about a few weeks ago, but I'm not sure. Um, but seriously, uh, welcome. And thank you to the actual most feedback we've got on one episode. Um, and I think we're changing the name of the random video game review to Too Fucking Bad, Joe. It stays in. <laughs> Damn you, Twitter! Yeah, and we got people from all over, from Florida, from Los Angeles, right here in the great state of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give away our location. Uh, so, you know, uh, right into it, uh, did you see Samantha's B? What? Apology. I didn't see Samantha's B. <laughs> Did you see Samantha B's apology? I saw her apology, yes. And it was fantastic. Yes. And, and sincere. Right. You and, know, I, and I want to correct something I said last week. I rewatched the actual episode, and I didn't. I thought that they didn't bleep the C word, and they did. So that makes it like even less vulgar, in my opinion. Right. So I was completely wrong. I thought I, I'd heard an uncensored version, and I assumed that that's what they aired. But no, they, 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 they you know, they played it the way they normally would. But um, I guess, you know, you still have to apologize for even taking it down that road. Well, it's interesting because, you know, my management feels a certain way about the word, like, you know, um, and, and Samantha B said, look, I offend a lot of women who some women think we, we can use it. It's our word. And it's like, take it back or that. Some people don't like it. She said, and, and what I thought was the most interesting thing you know, is how she said it took focus off what she was talking about. And she feels bad that the narrative wasn't about these awful, you know, the awful things happened to these kids, that it became this. And she really wanted to help lend a voice to the people she was talking about. But again, it's, it's the same thing. It's like when Ricky Gervais, you know, you know, we talked about that before, you know, show people towards your dog and said, can you believe these two? Are doing this and, and people are like, do you really have to use that word? And he's like, that's your takeaway. Um, my favorite part is when she said, and I know it offended a lot of men. I don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yep. So uh, it'll good for her, and hopefully they'll now forget about what she said and actually focus on important things and move on. Right. I, I but I did. She she got in front of. Her. But again, as a com- in a comedic way, you know, her panel of censors it ended up censoring everything she said and then at the end of the show she's like, "So, tune in next week. We'll see you next Wednesday." And she said, "Okay. Solo. Have you seen it?" No. Tell me, have you seen it? <laughs> no, I haven't. All right, so I will give the complete spoiler review. Uh, he dies. No! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, hold on. Sorry. Being told that's Last Jedi. No, Force Awakens. Force Awakens. So, so um, you know, it's one of those things where it didn't do great at the box office, so a lot of people assumed it wasn't great. Um, it actually did what they were expecting Rogue One to do and others. The problem it's facing is 
halfway through the movie, they changed the director, rewrote it, and reshot a bunch of stuff. So it went way over on budget. And nobody really knows because, like, Box Office Mojo isn't putting up exactly what it cost. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not close to a billion dollars. It's not Infinity War, so it's a failure. I mean, it's close to about $300,000 going into this weekend. So it's going to probably double its money, but by Star Wars standards, that's... It's low. And people are saying it, maybe it was the bad marketing. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, because you're notorious for <laughs> la-la-laing through anything Star Wars. As, as all you need to know is title, and then even that, maybe, it might be like bordering on spoiling the movie. Just Star Wars and date. That's, that's all that's I need. It. My name is Jacques. I'm no fun. <laughs> True on all accounts. <laughs> and at the same time, it's like the other thing is, is it Star Wars fatigue? Yes. I, I it, they could have not put it out in the same month as Deadpool and Avengers, and then like you know a month removed from Black Panther. Or so you know, I mean, there's a lot Jurassic World, Jurassic coming World's out. coming out. The, the Incredibles is coming out. Yep. A couple. I mean, granted, this is blockbuster season, so. But but I, we were saying a few weeks ago, it's like not that those little like you know dream squashers upstairs are actually going to college, but if they were college bound, this summer alone is wiping me out. It's right, a, it's a hundred bucks for the four of us to go to a movie with the tickets and the crap. Not a hundred, but literally seventy bucks every time we go. And there's been five must see in theater movies this year alone. Maybe the movie wasn't toyetic enough for Disney, so maybe they decided that they weren't going to have a lot of tie-ins for the Christmas season, or maybe they have something else. So is Christopher Robin coming out? No, that's an August movie, so I don't know. Whatever. Maybe they just wanted to get this up and in. The, 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 the spectrum of movies so that they can, I don't know, make just a little extra. This is sort of like the, the little extra money that they would make on top of Avengers and on top of Black Panther. And was anybody asking? And, and, and now, granted, and this is my favorite character. And I wasn't screaming out for his backstory. backstory right. Some things, you know, there, there, there is such a thing as TMI in these types of movies, you know? Like the Boba Fett movie that's being. Nobody needs it. Nobody wants it. Love Boba Fett. Yeah. As the Boba Fett. But I don't need to know what happened, like, you know, after his father's head got chopped off, mm -hmm. by, you know, by, by Mace Windu. Um, and that's the thing. It's like, at, at the same time, one of the great things about Han Solo in, and um, A New Hope is the growth of character. He completely starts on this side of the spectrum and comes out on the other. You know, from just being a pirate, being a, a, a smuggler, being on the wrong side of every, every e e either either the local law, on, uh, you know, the wrong side of uh, Jabba the Hutt, and the wrong side of the Empire, mm -hmm. and goes to be this leader of the rebellion, or, or a, a, a crucial part of the rebellion. You know, he had that growth. And so to show his backstory that, you know, and, and again, it's like revisionist history. It's like I said, I think it's season five or season six. I can't remember what the last one of Clone Wars War, where it was, oh, we've painted ourselves into a corner. Let's explain our way out of half the fuck ups. And, and again, like Rogue One, same thing. It's my second favorite Star Wars movie, but it's like, okay, the one big flaw that everybody's always made fun of is you got this moon-sized Death Star that can be taken down because of one shot in the right panel at the right time. And... Don't you think we should put some plywood on it? <laughs> uh, maybe we, we should get a couple bits. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. And it's like, oh, so they did this amazing movie. No, 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 it wasn't a flaw in the movie. It wasn't a, a plot mistake. No, no, it was this genius developer who, who yeah, you know. The engineer, right. They took it down from the inside, tapping my nose. And, and so, this, so, so this was kind of trying to, you know, kind of trying to do that. And again, and... When I buy it on Apple TV in three months and you get to watch it, we'll circle back and talk about like the spoiler things about it. But that's the other thing is it's like you 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 used to have to wait four four years between Star Wars movies and then fifteen years between Star Wars movies, and now it's six months. You know, so so not only do you have big blockbuster fatigue, you have 
Star Wars, just in this universe fatigue. And then we also have Star Wars Resistance coming up. And there's, yeah, there's, there's no lack of Star Wars in the foreseeable future. Right, right. And, 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 you know, so like I know, I think Rebels just, because I never jumped on the Rebels bandwagon, but I probably will go back and watch it because I've heard it's pretty good. But that's just rap too. So mm. so literally, it's it's so in your face. And that the fact that I follow Mark Hamill on Twitter, I'm constantly bombarded <laughs> I know, right. by Oh, man. So, um, yeah. So that's it. No, I didn't go see Solo. And I don't know. I'm less now inclined to go see it. it, it, it literally, I like it. Was, it, was, it was fun. It's, a, you know, it's, a, it's like Thor Ragnarok. You know, it wasn't the Thor movie that I wanted, but I didn't ask for my money back on the way out. I probably will go and see Incredibles 2 in the theater, but that's a whole other that, that's yeah, and and it's interesting that they didn't age it. It wasn't like twenty years later. It's like well, with voice a couple acting, months later, it's great. Like you don't have to with cartoons. It's funny that way. They don't have to age like in Toy Story three. <laughs> By the it's way, okay. we love you. Did you see? I know that you follow this account on Twitter now. The and that's actually how I got into following it on Twitter. The what's it called? The movie uh, Easter eggs. I just found it the other day, and I must have liked like fifty things. Yeah, it was really annoying. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, but, right? But I like the, the the Easter egg about how in Toy Story three the garbage man w- turned out to yep, be Sid, Sid. because uh, in the you, the giveaway was the t- the skull on the t shirt. And I said it before; it's one of my favorite, might be one of my top ten favorite moments as a dad. And it was like, how the fuck do they know this? The the scene where where Frozone goes to get his super suit when when the city's being attacked towards the end of Incredibles and it's not there and it's the whole honey where is my super suit and it goes on and the wife is like and he's like the city is in danger I'm talking about the greater good woman it's like I am your wife I am the greatest good you're ever gonna get I think my little guy is like three to four at the time and they would just. Just uh, self indulgent theater all the time, go not just while the movie was playing, do it. And when he did it, I remember both of them were snapping their f- they were heavy set black women <laughs> and they had the hips moving and the fingers. And I was like, where would they have? And I remember Rick really Charles' time, I was like, where would they have gotten that? Like, like you all right, they learned it by <laughs> watching you. Like, the one time, the one time the little guy, and again, I was in guitar and I had a meeting. It's the one time, only time in their life they saw me in a suit. And I came out of the room in a suit and my little guy looked at me and goes, Papa, is that your Bruce Wayne costume? It was the greatest moment of parenting. Like, I won life at that point when my son associates me wearing a suit as being an actual costume. And I was like, dude, it is my. But when they were like, I'm the greatest coot you're ever going to get. And they had the inflection, the hips moving. I'm like, and, and, and management are looking at each other like, where the fuck does that come from? Do you must be like being VH1 on at night, <laughs> right? <laughs> and they're watching, you know, whatever shows are on the hip hop in LA or something. So the Easter egg thing is, is is one of my new favorite jams. But my other new favorite jam that's an old jam that I got back into that almost would be my YouTube Netflix pick of the week, but isn't. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I just fell down the wormhole uh, last night of Funny or Die mashups of movies, mm. and I watched. Deadpool and the proposal, and it's absolutely great if you are creative and have a shitload of time. How you can actually make two movies that have nothing to do with each other? Um, go and, and and the other one that I, I watched maybe three or four times is um oh what is it called like the Matt we Damon bought, movie. we bought a zoo we bought a zoo in Jurassic Park <laughs> honey we bought <laughs> Jurassic Park and it's like it is just and it is it's like when you like. It, like eating a chip or watching one epic rap battle in history. You can't do it. And it was like, I had so much shit to do. And it was like 45 minutes later. It's like, okay, I got to stop watching these. Right. Just six more. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I'm calling it quits. All right. So that's another thing I have to avoid on the internet. All right. Now, 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 hmm. you ready? Going to gonna take a little. We're going to play a game. Oh, good. It's called, it's called Friend or Foe. <laughs> I'll throw it out there and you tell me if it's friend or foe. Okay. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles or North Korea? Uh, there. Th- which one's the friend and which one's the foe? Right, right. Let's let's say you were the leader of the free world and you were going to invite one of the two of them to your home. Would you be welcoming in? <clears throat> so sometimes I, 
<laughs> champions. The, 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 what are you trying to say there? The super. Did you the see team, a ghost? The team that the Patriots didn't beat in February <laughs> um, have them to the White House or uh, maniacal dictator starving his own people, killing people around the globe, leader of North Korea. I, I, I'm very confused at which one is has been openly given an invitation and which one has been uninvited. Is there an answer that I'm supposed to be giving you? Yeah, <laughs> I get where you're going with this. Donald okay. Trump well, didn't well, invite the <laughs> they disinvited the Philadelphia Eagles because not all of them were going to be showing up because of his stance against the NFL for them kneeling during the national anthem to protest uh, blacks black being shot, shot by police. <laughs> and the uh, but he did actually throw out today. He threw out today. Well, I'll tell you what. If you stand for the anthem, you tell me who you want me to pardon. It's literally become game show. Uh-huh. I get, yeah, thank you. Like he, the, he's now throwing the because the backlash has been so bad. Who the other way wants a pardon? <laughs> so they're like, well, tell me who you. If you stand, you can tell me who you want to pardon, and we'll put them on a list, and we'll put them through the channels of consider. And if I don't pardon them, I'll at least let them out. And you're like, what the fuck? Oh, so. Um, was, was it the, over? W- would the announcer of that game show be Don Pardon? <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Um, I will ask you a serious question. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> and and did the Germans bomb Pearl Harbor? See, I'm confused. Let's say <laughs> the U.S. has a new ambassador in Germany, uh-huh. and within his first day, a few months ago, the first time the tariffs were announced um, that day. You know, a lot of, you know, European countries and people around the world are like, yeah, that works both ways. And he flat out said, no, you can't retaliate. This is how it's going to be. And Angela Merkel came out and said, new guy, um, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't speak German, but, it, 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 you know, but first now. It sounds and, a lot nicer in German. And my, in my defense, almost everything in German sounds like shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, even have a nice day sounds pretty. But they, but they did. He, he was like basically told, and he's had a very rocky relationship. And so now, you know, with it coming out again, and, and, and he, um, you know, he's been slapped down a few times, but just yesterday or two days ago, it was the, you know, the 74th anniversary uh, of D-Day. And the main spokesperson for the State Department, who was hired right off of Fox and Friends, wanted to let everybody know the great relationship that the United States has with Germany and that's been going back for a long time. And you take into like today is the 74th anniversary of D-Day. And it's like, does does she not know? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that uh, let's say we've had a great relationship for the last maybe 72 years. Yeah. Um, but on that day, we weren't simpatico. <laughs> right. And, there, was a, there, was a, there was a rift. <laughs> and that was the person that the State Department says, yes, we're going to have them go out there and smooth over the rough edges with the, uh, with the ambassador over there who, who Germany has said, yeah, we might ask him to be expelled. So mm-hmm. – so and and then last on New Year history uh-huh. was it the Germans after they bombed Pearl Harbor they helped the Canadians burn down the White House in eighteen. 18- I don't. I, I didn't even see that. I saw the memes or the, the talk about eighteen twelve and what happened, huh? When when why why do we have the tariffs on steel? Well, because of national security. You see the correlations. Of course. Okay. But explain well, to the audience. Well, and then Justin Trudeau basically said because they got hit the hardest. You know, one of the countries that could hit the hardest is like, how are you saying our steel is, you know, importing our steel is hurting national security? We are your closest friends since you've been a country, since we've been a country. We are your closest friends, not just geographically, but but every way imaginable. And to which Trump said, well, didn't you guys burn down the White House in the War of 1812? To his credit, he got the year right. <laughs> 50 <laughs> 50 if, if he got the year rock and, and literally and all the spokespeople were like trudeau just like stared at, like at the phone it's like because it was a conference <laughs> call and it's like he didn't know you know what to say uh until finally he said uh no that wasn't us <laughs> you know? wow. so yeah so know your history kids so or don't doesn't matter it doesn't matter make up my or make up your own it's so, easier that way how do we know the germans two things how do we know the germans 
didn't bomb Pearl Harbor, and there's nothing in the rule book that says an elephant can't pitch. Uh huh. So, what else is awful, Josh? I don't know. I, I, I'm more going off- down the list. Oh my like god! How much time? Have there's we like five ever- reams. Oh, of, <laughs> five reams of paper here. What is going on? Uh, well, I'll do it really quick. Uh, like I have a choice. <laughs> The they, huge. they used to be a thing called the G8. G, yeah, the G8. And now it's the G7. It was the G7. Yeah. It's a G7 yeah, because, because when Russia annexed Crimea, the others in the G7, or now G7, the others in the G8 said, hey, fuck you, Putin. <laughs> you can't play in our sandbox. And that means, like, you know, we're talking China. Or we're talking everybody else said to Russia. It's like, you can't be in our club if you're doing this shit. And that's the way it stood ever since it's happened. But Putin won again because, A, like we've talked about, like divide and conquer. He doesn't have an army. He has, you know, that th- can roll tanks through anymore. But it's the whole divide and conquer. And so now he has Macron saying, yeah, fuck you. You know, because Blotus came out and said, yes, I want Russia back in the G8. And the other seven people are like, oh, did he get back Crimea? Is he stopping rolling tanks into annexed like parts of the old mother Russia? Oh no, he's not. Okay, no, he can't come in. So Macron and 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 Trudeau said, "Yeah, we're going to talk to him when he gets here." To which I, I almost I almost said, "You're president." I did not. I so close. I would have walked off. So fucking close. I did not say that. But uh, he um, said, "Well, I talked to them." But we're an hour late getting out of here. I got to talk to the reporters, and we got to leave early to go see Kim Jong-un. So I'm not going to really have a chance to hang out at the G7 Summit. So literally, again, if, if you sat down five years ago and said, okay, without firing a shot, what would, would, what would Putin most like to see happen? And how would you take, the, take them down from the inside? And everything that could have happened has happened. But yeah, enough about that. Let's get on to the good stuff. What's that? North Korea. Oh, good. <laughs> and the summit. Oh. And who is our dream team going over? Uh, Dennis Rodman. Yes! <laughs> Do we have to even mention anybody else? No, I think that's it? it. You know, I think that's... And it's like, again, it's like... So if you're on The Apprentice at one point or another, you basically get comp launch to do whatever you want worldwide. Gilbert but, Gottfried must be ecstatic. Oh, that's right. Has he not called him? I don't think so. Uh, but he doesn't call anybody. Like, well, that's, that's true. <laughs> but does he know it doesn't cost to make outgoing calls anymore? Does, <laughs> does Gilbert still call everybody? Ring wants it, hang up. He still dials 1-800-COLLECT. <laughs> and then, you know, but seriously, you, you got John Bolton, who has, since the Bush administration, been lobbying hard, lobbying hard for preemptive strikes on North Korea. So you got him going over. You got Dennis Rodman, which, all kidding aside... Might be not the worst choice to bring over because the other guy he's bringing over is Gawker, who is also like, you know, a war hawk. G- Gorka? Gorka, sorry. So I knew I was going to mess up. Gawker was that uh, website that got taken down. Yeah. Fuck you, Hulk Hogan. I don't, need, I don't really care. <laughs> I, 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 you know. Right? I, you know um, but yeah, you go down the list. But at least we got Sean Hannity going over. Woo! The voice of reason. Not, not state run media at all. So. Do I get an invite too? I, I'm good. <laughs> This is Alex Jones, Super <laughs> Wars. I, 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 w- would it surprise you if you found out it did? What? And are we going to die? <laughs> and before you died, did you buy your commemorative coin off the White House <laughs> website? That, that's my question. Because it can only go up in value. It's like stamps, Joe. Right. Those stamps don't go down in value. No. They just don't. No. It's, it's a smart investment. Forever coin. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. The last, th- the last thing on this thing of awful, John McCain, who again, like today, you know, has come out and he's, he's saying all the right things, but it's one of those things where it's like, dude, you're dying. And I'm not saying that flippant. I'm not saying his opinion doesn't matter. But when you're going out the door and you're trying to have the revisionist history, and now he's saying how awful it is that they're taking children and stuff. When he ran for president, he was the one of the reasons he won his party's nomination is he was screaming the loudest about his wall. Because I remember, like, you know, if, if it was Rick Santorum, it's like, we're going to have a wall that's this long and this tall. And then the next person, we're going to have two walls with a no man zone in between it. And then 
and then the next person, we're going to have a no man's zone with a moat with alligator. No, croc, no alligator. <laughs> Wait, what? what's down there? <laughs> and, and then, but McCain was the one that, like, literally his wall sounded fantastic to, to the, the base. And so our wall goes straight up to heaven. <laughs> well, I'm going to be walking soon. <laughs> oh, and, and, and no, and it's awful, but, it, but look, I'm not saying he wasn't a war hero, he wasn't this, but this whole revisionist history. I love how, like, every week we're up and down on McCain. Like, thank you, John McCain, one week for staying. Standing up, and then the uh, next week is boo, well, well, John no, he, McCain. He, well, he stood up that week to say he wasn't saying that he didn't want to do away with Obamacare. He was saying it hasn't got its it's it's time. It's like we haven't had a committee, we haven't got to vote on this. So he was saying procedurally he wasn't going to steamroll this through. But then when the tax bill came out, which gutted it, he voted for. So so why are we mad at McCain for rewriting history if he's on the way out? Well, that well, no, I'm not mad at him, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not buying it. No, yeah, yeah, it's not like, oh, okay, so the 40 years of awful policies and homophobia and and, and isolism and xenophobia that you've been pushing, we're gonna forget about. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go from the Vietnam War to death and forget about all the awful in between. Well, there was a documentary that I was trying to watch uh, on John McCain on HBO that I think is. Maybe kind of whitewashing. I don't know how thorough they got. I don't know if it's. I'm sure it's putting him in a in a, in a nicer light. It's, it's probably the John McCain approved document. Oh no, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he was working well on for in. a year. Right. Um, so anyway, I, I meant to bring this up last week, but luckily it's not outdated, and I don't think it's going to be outdated for a while. Uh, does anybody like racism more than me? Uh, <laughs> wait, did that come out right? Yeah, it didn't come out did right. Come out Rephrase right? that. You're crazy over there. That's what you are. You're screwy. But but who who in your orbit says more awful things than me on a regular basis about everything? Well, since you and Jim are the only two people really in my <laughs> orbit on a regular basis... Well, you, but with me, I'm joking. Oh, that's right. Okay, good. <laughs> but, but, you Just know, kidding, Jim. You know, one of my favorite things is use a real, like an ethnic slur towards somebody, towards an ethnicity they have nothing to do with. Eth- <laughs> Repeat after me. Shut up. Ethnicity. 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 Listen, Magoo. You see? <laughs> oh, Magoo. No, that makes no sense. <laughs> oh, you've done it again. But, but we have your racism. <laughs> we have Biff here, and it's like, I'm an awful person. Um, but what's really interesting is a couple things, and I talked to you about it last week. You know, you had a fantastic party for, for Chip Boy's graduation, my sister's party that I, I was hoping went off great, went off better than expected. Like, the weather held up. It was absolutely great. I'm glad to hear it. I wish we could have been there, but, you know, my stupid kid had to graduate from a stupid high school. Yeah. Oh, well, dude, he's 27. It was about <laughs> fucking time. I mean, you know, take a victory lap. But it, but it went well. But here's the funny thing. I'm at Home Depot, and I'm buying a bunch of stuff, the, the, those mosquito candles and stuff like that. And I, like I talked to you, I'm standing there, and I FaceTime management, and I'm like, it makes sense to get these, but should we? And she's like, oh, stinky torches. Mm-hmm. And, and it sucks that it's like, yeah, I. they had nothing to do with it. The company had nothing to do with it. Nobody was underwriting what happened in Charlottesville that night. But doesn't it doesn't have like a like a warning label on it like hey it's uh, not for Nazis. <laughs> I think it might now. I didn't know if we got the you know anti Nazi one. But it, it's true and I started thinking it's like wow I mean how many people on one hand how many people think like that like okay I just can't like I'll get another product that's like this that isn't this and how many people look at it is it compensated by people who look at it and it says yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put Pepe Le Frog stickers all over this and either way the Tiki Torch people are making money. Yeah, exactly. So, but I couldn't. But I, I did. Like so recently, like racism really hit home with us. Um, and, and how so for, for for the two people listening who don't know this, uh, management is uh, is half Mago. I'm sorry, sorry, half Korean. And in the last few months, and it's been nothing. I shouldn't say nothing major. It's not me to decide. But when we were moving back in November and we had to get storage space, the guy who showed us the storage space was was really nice. Uh, the building was gorgeous. This old building, like on the old racket line, one of those old buildings. And he couldn't stop telling her, you can't store fruit in here. Yes, yes, I know. 
Well, that means rice, too. You can't put rice in here. You know, an older, heavyset white guy, and there was no me saying it to Biff. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't, what's the worst thing I can say to one of my best friends on the planet in front of other people who may not know that I'm just saying it to get a rise out of my buddy who's Japanese? And it's like the third or fourth time she's like, yeah, I get it. I'm not going to fucking have rice here. You know, and the guy's like, okay, I'm just, you know, I just know. And it's like, flash forward a couple months later, she's at a, she's at a work function in Lexington, uh, which means a lot of really rich, really white people. And somebody heard, you know, her talking to somebody else like, oh, you live in Lowell. There's a lot of Cambodians who live in Lowell. Are you Cambodian? Because she, you know, isn't pasty white like me. And she's like, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. And then she always gets the well. What are you? And her standard answer is, uh, "I'm American. <laughs> like right. uh, I was, I was born here." And uh, you know, it's like, "Oh, my mother's from Korea." Is that when she tries to play dumb? And then two weeks ago, like, so I wanted to bring the last podcast. We were getting rid of her mom's car because it's been parked for years since you know her diagnosis. I call Carmax. And at the last minute, like, so I do the research, how much it might be, and we don't care. Like, if they're within whatever, we're just getting rid of it. You know, we, we, we need it out of the yard. We don't want to pay insurance and taxes on it and all that. Just get rid of it. You know, and I know CarMax is just going to be fair about it. Last minute, her mom wanted to go. And her Korean's better than her English, especially, you know, with her condition. I call CarMax and I say... Hey, by any chance, I know the answer is probably no. Does anybody work? Because it's a big place. Does anybody work there happen to speak Korean? And the lady's like, no, but somebody speaks Chinese. And it's like, and for a split second, you're like. I'm guessing she sounded more like this. Ah, uh, no, but somebody down here speaks Chinese, I think. And it was everything I could do not to say. Oh, whoa, whoa. What, what form? Is it Mandarin? Oh, uh, Maybe. Yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and, and it's like one of those things. It's like, does this happen all the time? Like, is this because because seriously, because of my, you know, pasty privilege? Is it, do I not know this? And then and you saw on Facebook just last week, same thing. Another work function in Lexington, which means more really, really, really white, really, really, really rich people. And she's just making a coffee and somebody's just talking to her and just has no problem saying what are you? And and then she says American. And then the lady looks at her and says, oh, because, you know, you're kind of yellow. And I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I was like, and you want to look at your watch. It's like, oh, it's 64. Is it 1965? 1864. Like, I'm, 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 I'm like, you look yellow. You no, know, the only... <laughs> The only other time, and it was great because our friend Scotty Black from FNH, whose wife is from Japan, we're the last two on the ice, and you know Biff's out in the net, and an old guy we hadn't seen in a couple of years came by to visit. I mean, old like like I, he was either like eighty or dirt. I can't, I don't remember exactly. Does he talk like this? He yeah, yes, <laughs> and he and he and he didn't and since the last time he was here. Biff got new gear, so he didn't recognize him, and, and he goes, "Oh, who's the goalie?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's Biff." He goes, "Oh." Wait, that's the Orienda fella. And Scotty Black. He looks like a yellow. <laughs> and, and, and Scotty Black and I look at each other and we say the only thing you can possibly say. It's like, yeah, he's the Oriental. Like, like there's how are you gonna correct him? Right. That's that's why bother before that's before last November. It's like John McCain. You know, just let him say it. But, right. It's a, look, like like I said about like, you know, uh on George George Bush Sr. when he might have at eighty three had his hand on the waitress's ass. Think if you make it to 80, 93, you kind of get a hall pass here. You, you know what? If you are slow enough that he can grab your ass, maybe you don't blame him. No, no, Joe, 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 come back. Slam. <laughs> but, but seriously, it's like one of those things. It's like, and, and, and I can't stop thinking. It's like a year ago, would somebody have thought maybe not say, to, and and the funny thing is, it's like she was taking care of. There was a party. The girl, the kids, she was nannying for, and so the boss said, "Oh, some other people are coming over. I'll pay extra if you watch all the kids." So this woman is watching your child, and you outwardly say, "And it's like, is it is it is it racism or ignorance?" And it, 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 where where does it fall? It could be both. Why not? 
Yeah, I don't know. And what do you do? Like, what, what, do, you, do you turn around and make a huge thing out? Because again, as as we've talked, you know, one of her employers has said he didn't like Black Panther because he couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> In That's, his defense, you couldn't name who played Black Panther no, in a quiz. I can't, but I can't name anybody. That's true. Like, like literally, I'm a horrible. Except for uh, Liam Hemsworth and uh, Robert Downey Jr. No, but but like like oh my god, I almost just said I almost just said I like the guy from Community who played Lando Calrissian, oh. but I can't remember his name. And I'm thinking wrong example, Chuck. <laughs> but I don't. I don't. Donald know the, Glover. I don't know the guy who. And isn't he also kid gorgeous? Childish Gambino. What kid gorgeous? I don't know. I know he's some singer as well. He looks like a <laughs> ding. <laughs> I like to extend a list laurel and a hearty handshake to our new. <laughs> anyway, so with all that, you know, Ooh. we're blowing through this now. Oh, now God. we get to the defunct sponsor of the week, kids. Now you get Rickshaw Runner completely free inside every box of post rice crinkles. Rice that is crinkled is sweetest to eat because it's crinkled with sugar, and sugar is sweet. Ah, so. And look, now free, me and Rickshaw in box. Look, there's a so high Rickshaw Runner in every rice crinkles package. Post cereals make breakfast a little bit better. Uh, and now, it's not my favorite part of the show. It's our audience collective favorite part of the show. It's the fuck you, Joe. It's staying Wait. random video. Uh, oh, do you want to do sports first? I thought oh. we were going to do sports. Yeah, all right. That's my bad. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do sports because my Las Vegas night's lost. But I have, you know, my niece who lives for the Washington Capitals and my friend, you know, Price is right from the team who li- who's going to go down for the parade and he's a lifelong Capitals fan. So I am happy. I just hate Ovechkin and I hate the fact that Putin is very happy that Ovechkin will be bringing the trophy, you know, the Stanley Cup back there. Uh, and the thing is, you know, uh, the, the other thing I was glossing over sports is who is my favorite New England Patriot? Uh, the Rob Gronkowski. No, not well. Nah. We'll talk about Rob Gronkowski. So the rumor today is that and oh, it, Julian, and, yeah, Ed, Edelman. Julian Edelman gets popped for four games for for PED. He's appealing that. He is appealing this, but the House of Cards. It was my once beloved New England Patriots is falling apart again because Kraft wouldn't let Belichick trade Brady. Brady he got uh, Belichick gets pissed and gives Jimmy Garoppolo away to a good team so he can say, look, for the next 10 years, this is your mistake. Mm-hmm. But now Brady's like, you have no plan B. I got one year of my contract. I'm going to hold out and ask for more money. You know who else has one year on his contract? It's Rob Gronkowski. He's going to hold out with me. And because I got him into the TB12 thing and Alex Guerrero as his guy too, um, you know, it's all falling apart. And guess who else is an Alex Guerrero guy? Julian Edelman. And so when Alex Guerrero sends out a statement, I can't believe he did this. I'm so I'm so shocked by this. It's like, wait a minute. Aren't you the guy in 2007 who got popped by the FDA for selling cancer water? And aren't you the guy who in 2010 got Tom Brady to be the voice of your concussion water that the FDA also stepped in? He's been cited twice by the FDA for selling for being a snake oil salesman and for somehow he 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 is pulling the strings. You got to admit though the Alex Guerrero snake oil does work. Oh no, I mean look, I mean I he, rubbed he it on myself old... <laughs> and the snakes are just a coming. He put the old snake oil salesman out of business. No, that you know <laughs> that that is true. Um so but but back to the cup for one second. There's a guy on, you know, and it's I always cry when you see these guys win the cup. It doesn't matter. It's a lifelong thing. And one of the guys on the Crapitals, dad has Alzheimer's. Oh. And he was being interviewed on the ice by Ronick after it. He's like, dad will remember this the rest of his life. And a few minutes later, you know, the footage of dad holding, like, you know, the cup over his head and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, okay. Now, uh you know, sticking with football. Uh-huh. So Gronk was going to get traded today. Okay. And then the word is Brady said, nope, I, re- I retire if you trade him. So, because Gronk's been a problem 
And so now you got Jules getting popped for four games, and that's and now well that's kind of strike three. And so now Belichick, Kraft can't tell Belichick, look, Alex Guerrero has to be around because of Brady. No, that gives all the leverage back to Belichick to say this son of a bitch cannot be on my sideline, cannot be in my building. Fuck that. I don't care. He's gone. And so it's just like you know this whole house of cards coming down. One thing <clears throat> to go back to the. The, as you call them, the Crapitals winning the Stanley Cup. Did you happen to see the celebration in the stands during the skating of, around of the? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. It was. Uh, it's Vegas, baby. Yeah, baby. It, it's, it's Vegas. Yeah. W- the woman flashed her boobs on television. W- w- she was. Is there I, any way that wasn't happening in Vegas? It was almost like Catholic schoolgirls in trouble, where they oh. <laughs> <laughs> the boobs are pushed up against the glass. Oh. Uh, or it could have been like Midnight Run or Midnight Cowboy, was it? Right, right. Yeah, right. And, and so there's two more quick sports things. Uh, and, and all joking aside, much like J.J. Watts um, going and being a fucking asshole and and doing all that fundraising for the hurricane relief and paying for all the funerals of, of you know the kids mowed down and stuff like mm-hmm. that and making it hard to hate him and the things, um, I, I want to get this straight. So did you see that the Eagles – um, Malcolm Jenkins, who 50-50, if he's related to Leroy Jenkins. God damn it, Leroy. <laughs> um, but so he had a, a press conference and and he won to talk and he has a whole pool of reporters around him and he has these big index cards, like these big Oh yes, and, poster board. And, and yes. it's all stats. It's like eight percent of African eight, this country is eight percent African American, but twenty five percent of people in prison. It's like there's you know, 400 kids, you know, in the Jew, in the pipeline, like, like all these stats. And he's like, and the reporters are like, are you not going to talk? You're just showing us a sign. And he, he kept going back to her sign that says, you're not listening. And so he, he literally, and they just, and it was brilliant because they stayed there, kept asking him questions and he would just show them like another card. So he's like, I'm not going to say anything to get me in trouble, but if you want to, and if you look at the screen grabs, and then kind of like check the stats. It's not, you know, slanted or misconstrued stuff. Um, but yet he's taking, again, it's like the silent protest, like mm-hmm. to the next level. And, and then Donald Trump held up a card that said, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but but along the same lines, it's like Fox News this week kept talking about them being, the Eagles being uninvited. Over the whole anthem protest, they kept saying it because, and they kept showing pictures of Eagle players taking knees, and it was Eagle players clearly taking knees, Christians in a circle doing their prayer. You know, a lot of there's a lot of God Squad in the NFL. It's like there's players warming up and running around behind. It was clearly, but they kept inferring that this was Eagle players. Not one Eagle player took a knee last year. In any game. And so the narrative, and then, of course, Fox News surprisingly, but did, came out and said, you know, we're, you know, we we, we fucked up. Now, there's enough awful in sports, Mm -hmm. but you know what's not awful? What? Welcome back this week in USFL history. Oh, boy. This week in USFL history, the Washington Federals, who only lasted one year before they went down and they became the Orlando Renegades, uh, they played at the old RFK Stadium, which, as you know, held 65,000 people, but the average less than seven. Like, literally only 14 people, or 14% of the stadium filled. But this week, June 11th, 1983... The Washington, um, <laughs> sorry, Washington Federals lost on the road to the Arizona and Arizona. Um, oh, what was that team's name? I can't remember that team's name. But they lost uh, eight to eleven. The I think they were called the Arizona. Mar- I don't give a fuck. Martin Luther King. Who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I I know there's a lot of awful in sports, but we have officially brought back this week in USFL history. You're welcome, Biff. <laughs> now we can now, do. You say it. My favorite part of the show, which I'm contractually obligated to say now that Facebook has told me otherwise. It's time for the random video game review of the week, where Jacques goes to the game wall. Um, I like to call it the Wailing Wall. It's, for my, it's where I just <laughs> nightly go up against this wall and cry for half an hour. 
um, at my lost youth. And he pulls down a game off of the shelf. And I kind of saw where he pulled the game from. But I don't know what game he pulled off. And this is where I have to guess. And, and you know, I re- randomly review it. And God willing, I played it. I <laughs> hope you played it right. So I'm, I'm not gonna... sure. I'm, I, I kind of like it when you have not played it. <laughs> and there's a story. I just bought it because it was there. Uh, can you just bring us some fresh games? Something this year. No. Yes. Yes, because you have all the games. I know. I have all the too. games. Did you pull off a PlayStation 2 game? I pulled off a PlayStation 2 game. Hmm. Now I'm going to guess that it's behind your head, and uh, it's it's not Star Trek Conquest. It's not State of Emergency. I'm going to say it's um, hard for me to figure out. What is it? It's uh, 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 Star Wars. The last Starfighter or something? Is it a Star Wars game? It is. And Star Wars Starfighter. It, was, it wasn't the it last Starfighter, but it was Star Wars Starfighter, a game I haven't played. Well, <laughs> we all had fun here <laughs> on the old podcast. Uh, let me open up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to read. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I'm just going to read. Did you know that the, uh, the, the, the item number is SLUS20044? Wait, say, say it again in case we're just writing it down. <laughs> and uh, the UPC number, <laughs> courage, skill, honor. These are the primary qualities. Wait a second. That sounds like a Star Trek intro. These are the three primary qualities that you must bring to Star Wars Starfighter. Sabotage. Does I Han Solo get killed in it? <laughs> this might be post uh, Han Solo. It's a flight sim. You, 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 know, you pilot, I uh, guess, a bunch of... Um, uh, this is actually, pr- I think this is pre, um, I don't know where this falls in the canon. And, and I mean, it's not canon, but I don't know where it falls in the in the universe. I'm guessing it's um, Anakin, you know, like prequel territory. When did this come out? Uh, riveting, isn't it? 2001. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is so probably around. prequel. A- Anakin's around. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm guessing this is a prequel era, uh, like, pre-Clone Wars kind of thing, or during the Clone Wars. I don't know. Who fucking gives a shit? And if you didn't own it, how much would you pay for it? Nothing, because I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> but you but did. I did. <laughs> God damn it. What did I pay for it? I guess I paid $3 for it. I'm going to say eBay, those grubby people on eBay are probably asking $6 for it. See, $4.97. All right. So you didn't double your money. But with but, shipping? But, oh. Ah. Right. See, that's, See? That's where they get you. It's a profit deal. <laughs> that takes all the pressure off. Anyway, so now that the pressure of the video game review is over, Jacques, what are you watching on Netflix? Redbox this week. Oh, Redbox. Uh, they still have those. Good la- for them. Lady Bird. I've seen that. You did? Yes. And your thoughts? It's a nice little slice of life. Um, you know, it's great acting, interesting story. I was kind of disappointed that it ended the way it did. Just sort of like, you know, right. it was like, okay, it's almost like... It almost looked like a pilot to something, like a series or something. Right, right. I mean, I like the, the, the growth of the character. I mean, she went seriously from being selfish little bitch, like, like a real narcissist, to having real moments of growth and maturity. I mean, like through the whole year, you know, I mean, you know, losing a friend, uh, the anxiety ridden moment when her new best friend, who's a rich girl, is going to her, what she thinks is her house because she told her she right, lived right. And it's like, management. That's Management doesn't like movies. She likes watching me watch movies because <laughs> of my uh, palpable anxiety. And it's like... She, she likes to see the sweat beating on your forehead and you writhing in pain and collapsing I, into a fetal position. I mean, I did. We, we... And maybe she watched it. I didn't watch, like, the last season, maybe season and a half of The Office, I just couldn't take it. I liked it. I liked Stephen Carell. Like, I, I, I liked a lot of things of the show. It was just too much for me to take. But I liked it. You know, I kind of wish, and this is one of those things, I, I, I when I saw the preview, it's not like I knew this movie was coming out, so I kind of wish I didn't see her throw herself out of the car, because that would have been a funny thing, you know, to, to kind of kind of be caught off guard. But, but I liked it. You know, the, and the only thing, it's like, usually... You don't go off to school and a month later have that epiphany that you're selfish and your parents did all these great things and you're going to call and say, 
I love you, mom. It usually takes a little longer. Yeah. To kind of, but what are we going to do? Like six years later. I know. You know, eh, it's an ending. What are you going to do? But I did. I, I, liked, I, I liked it. You know, and of course, I liked the fact that it was red box. And I think I returned it on time. So it wasn't <laughs> like a $4 rental to rent it for one night. Um, but that, I did. That is like the last bastion of rental experience, that red box. That yeah. anxiety of, I have to return this, this responsibility that's now bestowed upon me. Hence, or lest I get fined an extra three dollars for holding it an extra day, um, I can't deal with that. I just uh, I don't know. I'm no, kinda... I mean because I mean, mo- most of the time it's like I'll see something. We rented something the other night for like a buck off off, you know, off the TV, like mm. off demand. I'm like, oh, that's just great. But I was, you know, and I think honestly. I kind of had wanted to see the movie, but it wasn't like, I got to get to Redbox and get this. But I think it was right after the Roseanne debacle. I'm like, I like Metcalf. Like, I, I like her. She's always been great. I heard she was great in this, and she was fantastic. Yes. She was really, really great in this. I, I agree. So Do so there's that. What I, and what I have, um, well, I'm glad you asked because, I'm, sh- as you know, I prepare for each and every podcast. Labor. Right. It's like watching you give birth each and every week. <laughs> Pretty much feels like it too. <laughs> I don't have much of a red box Netflix pick, but I I've been getting into a show on HBO called Barry. Uh, it stars Bill Hader, and it's a funny premise. He's this kind of stoic, cold, like ex Iraqi or uh, Iraq War veteran who turns into a hitman, and he works for Stephen mm-hmm. Root. You know Stephen Root? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they have this sort of s- small mom-and-pop kind of hitman, hitman business. Company? Yeah, and um, they work for, like, these Croatians, and it's, it, it gets involved. But there's a turn in which he, uh, the character Barry, played by Bill Hader, is one of his assignments is to kill a guy who takes these acting courses at some sort of like learning annex kind of thing, and Henry Winkler is the acting oh. coach, and he stumbles in. So he's taking out the hit, and he follows the guy in, who's like this, you know, kind of losery act, wannabe actor guy. But he follows him into the studio, and then Henry Winkler spots him, and he says, "Are you reading tonight?" And then he just sort of like goes up there and partners with somebody, and he kind of falls into this love of acting. So like he wants to quit being a hitman and become an actor but he's being dragged back into the hitman world like he can't just leave because of the circumstances so he's basically living a double life like they don't know that he's a hitman obviously but uh, you know he still has to fulfill his hitman duties and it's really dark and funny i'm only three episodes in but if you haven't subscribed to hbo i suggest you do because this is top-notch television says the guy who doesn't have espn right well you know i (laughs) Pick and choose. Um, I do need to get that for 30 for 30, though. I mean, every 30 for 30 is fantastic, and I keep missing each and every You don't one. have to, literally, you don't have to like sport at all. And even if you like some sport and you don't like others, if those sports that you don't like, there's a documentary of, you're like an hour and a half, two hours later, like, this is the fucking greatest thing I've ever seen. I had no idea, like, the depth of all this. But. Yeah, I get my fix with real sports on HBO, but that's once a month, and it's not enough. But uh, yeah, all right. So that's, that's my pick. What else do we have going on this week, Joseph? Nothing. <laughs> oh, are you talking about our new sideshow? Yes, I am. You mean our new sideshow about? The Simpsons? Oh wait. <laughs> See no, what I did with it? No, a, no one likes I, you. I know. <laughs> I'm the president of that fan club. <laughs> There's no one likes show club. I, uh, I am not uh, only a client, <laughs> I'm also the person, whatever the fuck it was. We're doing a sideshow about Warner Brothers cartoons. And not just me, and not just you, and not just us two, but we're bringing in a third party, my friend Peter. Allegedly. Yes, I have another friend. Allegedly. Do you have a problem with that? I've never met. I'm looking around the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see Snuffle up against anywhere. <laughs> uh, but allegedly. He was right there. Unlike you, uh-huh. unlike me, there's going to be somebody on a mic who has a clue about the words that are coming out of their mouth <laughs> and the subject <laughs> in which they are talking. Well, you're right. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. He is an authority. He's a, 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 an extremely prolific – I don't know if the word prolific is the right word, but he's, he's a, a, a very big 
animation collector, um, connoisseur. He's the the the, the encyclopedic knowledge uh, will astound you. Now, yeah. yes or no? We have time to watch everything in the catalog beforehand. Yes. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> um, so we do have a sideshow this week uh, that will drop on Thursday, midnight. Stay up for it Wednesday Pressure's night. Pressure's on. I got to edit this thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, it's like, and we'll talk about it at the beginning of that show as well, but it was six plus months ago, you had mentioned the 11 band videos. The Censored 11. The Censored 11 that we sat here and talked about. We ended up Googling. We actually watched a bunch of them. And your friend Peter, the collector, had like um, come upon a collection of these things, which you know were categorized and all this stuff. And I said, write to you. You are no longer a friend until this person shows up here and talks about this stuff. Did I not say that? And have I not been holding a grudge the entire time since today? You have. And, and thank God I've been saved up enough money to lure him to <laughs> <laughs> join us on our podcast. So I'm very, I, 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 I am. I'm really excited. Um, and now Jacques. It's my favorite time of the... Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. It's the time where I have nothing to offer, but you have everything to offer. It's Shock's parenting tip. Okay. So my long- youngest little fucker, um, out of the blue, about six, eight weeks ago, I want to play baseball, which, you know, I used to really like baseball. A- and I jumped off the, the Red Sox bandwagon in 2011, never went back. And over like the last seven years, I've grown kind of almost to disdain this slow, methodical, you know, $100 million players who are, you know, utility guys who miss half the season with a splinter. And the games take, I don't know the last time I saw a baseball game, but I think they take about seven, seven and a half hours to play if, 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 if memory serves right. Uh, no, seriously, when I was into baseball, it's like even people who love baseball, it's like Yankee Red Sox game was clocking in an average of four and a half hours. It's like, dude... I can watch, like, you know, a Transformer and a third of another one in that time. Um, but I wanted to. And um, so anyways, my little guy plays baseball. He signed up. It's it's so nice. It's, like, not like the baseball that, you know, we might have remembered growing up. Um, the bad news bears. It's, you don't have the parents yelling from the sideline. There's no taunting the other team. It, it, it's, it's not like snowflake baseball, but it's also not, hey – Everybody realizes I'm five seven. He's quarter Korean. We're very realistic about his athletic prowess moving forward on a larger scale, uh, you know. But he's not like a Julian Edelman, not on PEDs yet. Um, but no, he's not. You know, he's not all fired up. But he loves playing, and he's um. Oh, what's that word? Not good, you know. <laughs> but he's having so much fun. Um, these games, it's painful. It's it's watching paint dry, and and the highlight is he does not stop doing the dances from Fortnite in the field, like the entire time. And I said before, most of the coaching he gets is, you know, turn around, <laughs> not the whole way, <laughs> put your glove on. But he actually made a play the other day, like wow. on purpose. And he got the game ball and he was wow. so happy about it. Like literally he, 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 <laughs> He slept with it that night. I'm not exaggerating. Wow. He, he was sneaking in his bag so he could take it to bring it to school the next day. He didn't paint a red face on he it and call not. it Wilson, did he? <laughs> Wilson! Wilson! It's Voight, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but he, but he, um, he was. He was really, really happy about it. Now, this is a parenting tip of the week. you ah. got to walk the thin line between encouraging him and showing, hey, that was really great. And not falling down the rabbit hole of participation trophies. You made one play on this one game, and it was good, and I hope he enjoys that moment. He will, like, how he looked, like, holding the ball, showing me after, calling grandma. It was great. But that is not going to fuel me into, he's going to the batting cages every day of summer. I'm going to hit him ground balls in the backyard. <laughs> I'm going to make a Dustin Perard, you know. You're uh, not renaming him Tiger or Serena? No, no. You know, it was funny because we did – Go to a driving range for the first time yesterday. Just and, and I'll I'll post some pictures of it. And look, I am trying to find something that they're good at because they are my retirement plan. <laughs> like I said, they're my meal ticket. I oh, is hell all. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> leaving it up. And um, but but yeah, that's my parenting tip. It's like be encouraging, but 
be realistic. Right. You know, where are we going with this? Yeah, give your kid a add a gender neutral child. <laughs> Well, well done. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I know uh, my sister will enjoy it because it clocks in under an hour. This there's, there's not a oh at the hour eighteen minute mark. <laughs> there's not an ounce of fat in this podcast unless you look across the table. Burn. Guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> uh, but but literally, um, if you think this was great, wait till you hear Thursday's podcast. You better. Oh. And Jacques, one more thing. Please, for the love of God, you do this every week. Don't forget...